Too many golfers overcomplicate the golf swing, especially when it comes to taking the club back, beginning that golf swing. And if you find this is you suffering from too many swing thoughts, and these swing thoughts may work out on the driving range, but taking them to the course isn't quite the case. Well, in this video, we're gonna be looking at an easy method that you can do out on the driving range and take this out on the, to the golf course, keeping things simple for you with only just two pointers that you need to think about to take the club to the top of the backswing and one simple thought to the downswing. So for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Harry PJ, Golf Professional, transforming golfers worldwide down here at The Golf Projects. And if you're new, please make sure you hit the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner as it helps me grow the community. And I am posting every single week, at least two to three videos to help you transform your golf. And be sure to also comment down below the tips or drills video topic you would like me to cover in a future video. So I want you to remember this before we kick start with this move. The golf swing works in reaction. So whatever we do to begin that golf swing and take the club back to the top of the backswing position, we'll always find that we have the tendency of doing the opposite in the downswing. So what do I mean by this? Well, it can be two different methods. It could be to do with forces acted in relation to the ground. So for Isaac's third law of motion, for every force acted on a stationary object, for example, for us, the only connection we have is the ground, there is always an equal and opposite force acting upon it. For example, if we press into the ground and we push up, we're going to apply more force to go upwards. If we want to jump, we will go down to go up. The other reaction in the golf swing we have is when we take the club back and we swing, for example, too far on the inside, we can then get too far over the top to try and recover from this action. So we've got two there. We've got one that where we apply the force and that reacts upon it, and also the positioning of the swing. If we swing too far on the inside, we'll then revert to going too far over the top and vice versa, swinging too far on the outside, we'll swing then too far on the inside to try and recover from this. So in order for us to get these two correct, we want to be making sure we're getting these to work in our favor. So let's begin with the backswing phase. How can we simplify this move, taking the club back and working all the way to the top of the swing? We're gonna be talking about two things. And the first one, being how the body should work in the golf swing. So you're gonna take the club away for now and you're just going to place your hands either side of your thighs like this here, setting up as if you were to hit the golf ball. And I want you just to, first off, create this sense of an awareness of where the pressure is moving from trail side to lead side. And once you've got used to this, you can close your eyes as well just to develop this understanding even further, then bring it into the 50-50, keeping both feet planted hands go back on these each side and then from this movement here we're just going to then begin tilting like so we're going to add these two together in just a sec so we're tilting like so here and you can see there my head is tilting either side but my sternum is staying very much central we're not moving too far this way and we're not moving too far this way either because that'd be swaying too much in the golf swing. And now once we've got used to this, we can begin to add the rotation. So as I'm lifting my trail arm upwards, allowing this right arm to lift upwards, all I'm doing here is I'm allowing this hip to rotate away from the golf ball. And you can see here now when I'm doing this, going back to that pressure we were working on, feeling where that pressure was either side to start off with, we're getting this pressure working now into the trail side. We're allowing this pressure to transfer from 50-50 over to that trail side of the body. I'm rotating my hip, I'm allowing this trail shoulder to work upwards into the top of the swing. And you can see there from this camera angle, I'm able to maintain this nice shoulder angle. I'm not going too lateral, and I'm also not going way too vertical either, but the tendency we notice is getting this too much lateral motion here. Club then comes on the inside and then we react and go too far on the outside. So we're allowing this motion to take place, working all the way up to the top of the swing. And once we're set into this position here, we've got used to this motion, we can then bring in number two. We've got this body working the correct motion, but how do we get the positioning 
in the golf swing correct. Good enough so that we don't get a really poor reaction taking place in the downswing. Well, to do this, I want you to imagine you're going to be doing a bicep curl. I've spoken about this in a couple of my other videos, and this is so important that you do correct in the swing, which is why I'm including this in today's video. If we set up like this here with my trail arm, my right arm, facing like this, my palm facing away from me, the elbow is going to be pointing towards my body like this here. So we're not getting the elbow to start the golf swing pointing away like this, getting this very much internal rotation. A lot of us golfers do this too much and we're gonna explain how to cure this with the golf club in just a sec. We're going to get this palm pointing away from the body so that it's trail elbow is pointing towards the body. You're going to imagine you've got hold of a dumbbell in your hand like this here. And as you begin getting this motion to work up to the top of the swing, I want you to get a bicep curl taking place in your swing. So going to start again from this position here, we're allowing this arm to naturally flex, get this bicep curl working up to the top of the swing. At the same time, we're still getting this right hip, the trail hip working away from the golf ball. We're still feeling this tilting motion taking place. We're adding the pressure in to the trail side, the trail foot, working all the way up to the top of the swing. So these two motions here are all you need to think about for the backswing phase. So what this looks like with a golf club then. So to begin with, we're gonna be using two hands, of course, two arms, rather than just the one we had without the golf club. Moving this into the grip then, I mentioned just earlier that too many of us have the tendency of gripping the club like this here, with our elbow facing too far away from us. We want the elbow pointing closer, very much so towards us. It doesn't need to be very much touching the body, but it just needs to be nice and relaxed. You can see there it's not very much tucked in. It's just nice and relaxed. So what I'm going to do from here now is I'm just going to relax my arm again, just so I can restart with this. I'm going to take my hand out, I'm going to set with my right palm pointing towards the ground. And all I'm going to do is get that right palm pointing towards the sky. And when I do this, you can see my forearm rotates completely from internal to this external position here. Watch from here, internal to begin with, external to finish. So now I can place the club on the ground. And all I need to do to grip the club now is get this palm to point at the grip. So I've got the palm to sky first. It's really important we get this right first so that we can get that elbow pointing towards us. External rotation in the forearm. What I'm going to do is use my wrist to get that palm facing the grip. And then I can take the grip as normal with my right hand, my trail hand, all set in this lovely position to be able to begin that golf swing. So working this all the way up to the top of the swing, we've got this motion here of adding that pressure into the trail side. We're getting this trail hip working away from the golf ball. And then we're allowing this bicep curl with the trail arm taking place. Think of the lead arm as a guide on the club for now. So I'm taking this grip, palm pointing away from us, twisting it over to grip the grip. And I'm getting those two motions to work this club all the way up to the top of the swing. And I would highly recommend beginning with just a few slow swings, keeping everything nice and relaxed. Remember, all you're trying to do in the golf swing is get this right arm to go from extension to then flexion at the top of the swing. You're getting this bicep curl to take place all the way up to the top of the swing. So we're allowing this body to rotate naturally by relaxing everything. We're working up to the top like so. And if you believe that it still feels like to you, you're swinging too far on the inside or outside to begin the golf swing, you can take something as simple as an alignment stick. And if you place it just behind the golf ball like this here, in line with your target line, you can then just ensure that when you take the club back doing this bicep curl, it's staying over that line on the ground. Not for as long as possible, but just up until the point where the end of the alignment stick is from your eye line. So this is what we call the P1 position here, where the club reaches just before parallel to the ground. So we've got this trail arm set. We're allowing this bicep curl to take place, initiating this rotation from the right hip, working up to the top of the swing. So to simplify this, we're getting the bicep curl and we're getting our back to face 
towards the target. So now the downswing. How much do we really have to focus on in the downswing if it's going to be less than half a second long? Not a lot at all. That isn't enough time for us to overcomplicate this move. So we've got to think of something very, very simple that's going to allow you to deliver the club to the ball in the most effortless but easiest way possible. And to do this efficiently, we're going to do one more drill and then we're going to combine the two at the end. Once we're set in this position, working the club up to the top, we've got this bicep curl taking place in the rotation. All I'm going to get you to do here is just simply take your trail arm off the club. If you want to, you can grip down it like so if it's a little bit heavy. And when you get to the top here, we want to be ensuring that our body and our arms and club are working in the opposite direction. I'll give you a good example of this. If I was just to use two hands here and I was to hit a baseball, right? I was playing baseball, I'm gonna hit a baseball here, okay? I wouldn't get this club working in the same direction like this because it looks too tense, doesn't look very good. I would increase this width between my chest and the golf club. We're allowing this room, this width take place in this baseball swing. So taking this into the golf club then, it works the exact same for golf. However, golf works in this 45 degree angle as opposed to very much upright like this here. So we're just going to nice and simply work it up to the top. We're using one hand, the left hand, because if we drag the club this way, you can really feel it with the lead hand. So up to the top here, and we're going to create this separation by pushing our chest away from the golf club and away from the golf ball. So watch this here, I'm working up to the top. And then from this position here, I'm pushing my chest away from the golf ball. And you can see how quick I'm able to swing this club one-handed, how effortless that looks, just with me feeling like the club is going to be pushed away from my chest, going towards that golf ball, and the chest is pushing upwards and through towards the target. So I'm up to the top, allowing his chest to work away and through to the target here. If it goes towards the golf ball, that creates this very much inconsistent downswing. That creates that reaction taking place, this over the top or under plane reaction that we don't want. The three things you want to be taking away from this is for the backswing, we're thinking a two. We're allowing this back, rotating, getting this right hip away and getting the shoulder working upwards. But the key with this is you will be able to do those motions now if you get your back facing towards the target. So number one is back to target. Number two, how do we set the club up to the top of the swing? We're taking both hands, ensuring we're getting this right arm set in position. We're getting this bicep curl working the club up to the top. So for the back swing, the two things are back to target and bicep curl. For the down swing, the only motion that we want to be thinking about is getting this chest working away from the golf ball and through to target. So chest is going to turn to target. So for the backswing, we're getting the back facing towards the target. We're getting this bicep curl taking place. Then for the downs, we're getting this chest to the target. By all means, like, share, subscribe, but do me a favor. Go ahead and check out this video over here, which is going to help you ensure you're getting the takeaway work in the correct position, how we can control this club head even more so. These two coincide with one another really well because we've spoken about two efficient things that are going to help you get to the top of the swing, but this one really dives into it in a little bit more detail. So go ahead, give it a watch, and we'll see you next time.